Today's video is about one of my favorite players ever, Percy Harvin. This dude was one of the most dynamic players I've ever seen on a football field. I mean, he had almost no weaknesses as a player. He had 4-4 speed, but his acceleration was on a hunt. No lie, it felt like this dude could take one step and just be at his max speed, just like that. But he didn't just have straight line speed. His change of direction was crazy. He was hella elusive and make cats miss easy. Make them look stupid, too. Had vision, hands, could run routes, set up blocks. I'm, dude, I'm, come on, bro. No weaknesses. Step one, chronic, debilitating, excruciating migraine. I'm talking about headaches that would just put you on your ass. It's really unlike anything I've ever seen in any other pro level at. Now I know Percy had plenty of other injury problems that weren't related to the migraines, but I have a theory that maybe they were. Now check it out, we got a ton of stuff to cover on this topic, so what we're gonna have to do, we're gonna break this down into two parts. Today's video is gonna be part one. We're gonna cover Percy's early life, upbringing, high school, and of course, his college day. In part two of the video, we're gonna talk about his days in the NFL, and we're gonna go deep, like in depth, into this migraine situation and this theory that I've got. Don't forget to like the video if you like it, subscribe if you're brand new, and without further ado, let's talk Percy Hart. Percy Harvin was born and raised in Virginia. As a kid, he lived with his mom and his sister. Now, we could take a quick look at their athletic history, and that'll pretty much let you know where Percy gets his athletic ability from. Percy's mom, Linda, ran track in high school and would later go on to become a track coach. Percy's sister actually went to Eastern Michigan on a track scholarship. So you can see the speed runs in the family. Now, it didn't take long to see that Percy Harvin was going to be a beast at football. Coaches knew he was special as early as the age of six. It was at that age that he played flag football and was as untouchable then as he was during his college days. Now, Percy actually began experiencing migraines as early as 10 years old. So the argument that these migraines somehow stem from football is possible but very unlikely as he had mostly just been playing flag before that point. Now a few years after that, Percy did play Pop Warner and at the age of 13, he actually led his Pop Warner team to a national championship. Basically, put Percy on your team, you win the championship. That started way back then. When Percy was 12, much like his mom and his sister, he hopped on the track. At 12 years old, he was a part of a four by 100 relay team that won, you guessed it, a state championship. Jumping forward a little bit, by the time he was a junior in high school, he had developed a bit of a chip on his shoulder and he had been known to let his temper get the best of him sometimes. There was times he got suspended from games for unsportsmanlike conduct, once got into a fight with an opposing player during one of the school's basketball games. Not like in the crowd, like he played basketball, like on the court, like he got into a scuffle. It's called a scuffle. One time on a football field, he even made inappropriate contact. I don't know what that means, maybe push a referee and of course this too got him suspended from multiple games everything that i could find suggests that all of these actions were strictly during these sporting activities sounds like a dude that's very very competitive but young and can't really control his temper all the time but no doubt when he got on the field he was one of the most talented dudes ever as a junior he helped lead his high school team to a 14 and 0 record on the way to a state championship and if you thought percy did it all in college he did even more in high school of course check this out in the state championship game he alone percy harvin accounted for 476 all-purpose yards in one game that was also the championship game. I mean, rushing, receiving, he had interception yards, return yards, everything. And he also put up five touchdowns in that game. Now, it's not super uncommon for the star player to just beast out in high school, even though those numbers probably are a little bit uncommon. But you have to factor in that this is the state championship team, meaning it's a good team. Like you can't win a state championship with one player. So on a team talented enough to win a state championship, this man putting up 476 yards and five touchdowns in the championship game. That same year, Percy also made it to the state championship in basketball, but they was unable to pull that one out. Stay with me, we're still in the junior year of high school, okay? Track rolls around. What's Percy do? At the state track meet, this man takes home 
five state title in the same meet. He won the 100 meter dash, the 200 meter dash, long jump, triple jump, and one of the relay. Now remember the little scuffle and the thing with the ref and that stuff we talked about earlier? It came back to bite Percy later. Cause even though he was punished right when it happened, during his senior season, he got suspended from all athletic competition by the Virginia High School League. This actually caused him to miss the state indoor track meet. But regardless, Percy was ranked as the number one player in his class. And with 77 total touchdowns, he actually accounted for more TDs than any player in the history of the Southampton Rose area in Virginia. So we're talking about more TDs than Michael Vick, AI, Plexico, Dante Hall, and they play defense, but a lot of NFL talent coming out of there. Most touchdowns ever. Percy. Let me just clean this up and say NFL talent. Just talent in general, because obviously AI went on to play basketball where well, he was a beast in high school football played quarterback most of y'all know that i'm sure but there's that one guy who was already typing now you may not have known but percy harvin actually verbally committed to florida state before flipping and going to Florida. And he definitely made a great choice as it was a perfect fit, man. Urban Meyer immediately recognized just the dynamic ability of Percy and he didn't try to limit. As a true freshman, he lined up at running back and receiver. Even lined up at QB a couple times. And just like flag football in high school, Percy joined the team, ha, national championship. And he actually played with another college football legend, Tim Tebow. Tebow actually wasn't the full-time starter as he too was just a true freshman, but clearly he left his prints on that team. Anyway, that's for another video. Back to Percy Harvin. So that first season on campus, he put up over 400 yards receiving, 400 yards rushing, and yeah, that sounds a lot like the Anthony Thomas' stats, but Percy won MVP of the SEC championship game, and he won SEC freshman of the year. And he did all that despite multiple injuries that season. That's including a neck sprain that had him carted off the field. But in true Percy Harvin fashion, the very next week he played in the SEC championship game. He ran for 105 yards in the TD and had five receptions for 62 yards and a receiving TD. In his second college season, Percy improved at everything as he became even more of a focal point of Florida's offense. He actually had his best statistical season from a yard standpoint that year. He put up 858 yards rushing and 764 yards received. The thing I like about Percy the most was, yeah, he played in Florida's offense. So he ran a ton of options, reverses, in arounds, tons of screens, some wildcat, but he can also just take a handoff and be a running back. And he could also just line up and run a route and make plays downfield in the receiving game. He wasn't just an athlete who always had to get the ball in space. Sure, he was great at that, but he wasn't just limited to that. He also just made everything look fluid and, and natural, you know what I'm saying? It's important to note that throughout this entire process, Percy's still dealing with migraines, he's still dealing with other injuries. We're not gonna go deep into those right here. Just know that going into his junior season, he actually had surgery on his heel, heel of his foot. This was supposed to help prevent reoccurring injuries that he had with his Achilles, his knee, hip flexors, and his hamstring. During the recovery process, Percy couldn't run, but instead of sitting around doing nothing, he decided to work on his upper body strength. He had gained a little bit of weight after the surgery and was up to 205, and it was during this time that he got his bench press up to 405 pounds, which is pretty damn impressive for a dude that runs a 4-4 and cuts like a cat. After this, Urban Meyer actually announced that Percy would be moving to running back. But when the season started, he actually played more receiving than he played running back, so it was basically the same as it always was. The surgery may have helped reduce the injury frequency, but obviously it couldn't completely prevent injury. And later in that season, Percy injured his ankle and missed the SEC championship. Fortunately, Florida won the game and Percy then made it back for the national championship. Coming off the ankle injury to play in his second national championship, Percy Harvin put up 122 rush yards and a touchdown. He also caught five passes for 49 yards. Throughout Percy's entire college career, he missed a ton of practices, and he even missed a few games with a severe migraine headache. But he always managed to ball out in nearly every game he played in. But after his junior season, he decided it was time for him to go pro. Now, had he stayed one more year, he would have easily gone over 2,000 yards rushing and 2,000 yards receiving. Come and think of it, if not for his frequent injuries, he would have easily 
going over 2,000 yards in both categories. He ended up finishing with 1,929 receiving yards and 1,852 rushing. That along with his 32 touchdowns made him one of the most prolific offensive threats in the University of Florida's history. Percy Harvin was destined for great things in the NFL, but an issue that he'd been dealing with since he was 10 years old would come back to bite in more ways than one. Now we're gonna get into that more in part two. Again, I'm gonna drop that for y'all tomorrow. I hope y'all dug this video and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. The Lord raps. Mwah. Yeah,